Well, hello. I'm Bill Simpson. It's April 18th, 2020. I'm at home in Golden, Colorado. This is a lecture for my philosophy students at Metropolitan State University of Denver. And what I'd like to do tonight is talk about uh, several loosely related topics. Uh, first of all, I want to revisit the idea of teleology because this is going to be important going forward as we think about Thomas Nagel's work. Secondly, I want to talk about the version of verificationism that we find in Alfred Ayer's 1936 work, Language, Truth, and Logic, and how logical positivism drives what Ayer calls the elimination of metaphysics and more specifically, how teleology fares in said elimination. Finally, I'll conclude with uh, several standard criticisms of logical positivism and verificationism more generally. So, on to teleology. Teleology is the metaphysical concept which holds that what something is, is determined by its function. And so, for example, a doorstop is what a doorstop does. And notice that this doesn't uh, preclude an artifact having multiple functions. Now, let's look at the idea of metaphysics, or the uh, uh, adjective metaphysical. Uh, the adjective metaphysical just means stating something about the nature of reality. For example, what a thing is, or stating some rule about how we think reality hangs together. And by function, I mean to pick up the meaning of that old Greek word ergon, you know, literally work, or the job that something performs, a thing's purpose. And that purpose can either be imposed from the outside, extrinsic, or it can be intrinsic, arising from within the item itself. Now, verificationism, what's that? The core idea of verificationism is that a statement's meaning is linked to how it's confirmed. So, suppose I were to say, there is a secret society that's so secret that absolutely nobody in the world knows how to find it. Have I said something meaningful? Well, Alfred Ayer thinks not. Let's take a look at page 35, where he says, We say that a sentence is factually significant to any given person if and only if he knows how to verify the proposition which it purports to express. And so, how would I verify? that there is a secret society that's so very secret that absolutely nobody in the world knows how to find it. Well, I can't. So I might look like I'm making sense or saying something meaningful, but in fact, I'm not. I'm talking gibberish. I'd just as well be speaking to you in Slovenian, and you don't know Slovenian. Now, there's a second layer to this, and the second layer is a doctrine about how statements are to be confirmed or disconfirmed. And in logical positivism, positivism, what we get really is Hume's fork supplemented by the mathematical logic that was developed in the early 20th century by Bertrand Russell and Alfred North Whitehead. And so just like in Hume, the logical positivist says that there are only two kinds of meaningful propositions relations of ideas and matters of fact. Now, relations of ideas are discovered a priori from first principles. So an example would be that if P then Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. And if we had world enough in time, I could show you how mathematically those two statements are equivalent how one statement says the other. Because for Ayer, as for Hume, all a priori statements are tautologies. All a priori statements restate themselves. So if I said, if there was no property, then there could be no theft, then I'm just restating a claim. 
Secondly, matters of fact are verified a posteriori, or verified through experience. And for the logical positivists, a posteriori statements are oftentimes predictions about how future events will occur. And these empirical generalizations are discovered on the lab bench or in the anatomy room. And so, for an example, the positivist's example of a matter of fact would be that the islands of Langerhans are found inside the pancreas. So let's look at how air defines, or air makes this distinction. On page 41 of the 1936 edition, he says, tautologies and empirical hypotheses form the entire class of significant propositions. And then in the 1946 introduction to the second edition, he says, the principle of verification is the doctrine that a statement is held to be literally meaningful if and only if it is either analytic or empirically verifiable. So once we have that information under our belts, we can proceed to what Ayer called the elimination of metaphysics. And we, and we can do this by looking at uh, several examples of what Ayer might think are metaphysical propositions. For example, suppose we said there are no uncaused events. How would we verify that? Uh, can we verify it a priori? No, because it's not a tautology. It's not a statement that says itself. And can we verify it a posteriori? No, because it states a universal rule. It's not a mere probabilistic prediction about future experiences. And so, if I were to say to you, there are no uncaused events, I'm talking gibberish to you. But let's try another one. Animals have souls. Is it an a priori statement? No, because the front part of the statement is different than the back part of the statement. And is it verifiable a posteriori? Well, let's ask some questions like a logical positivist might have asked him. What is this soul of which you speak? Do you have a photograph of one? How much does this typical soul weigh? So again, uh, notions of the soul aren't things that are going to be solved on the lab bench or in the anatomy room. So again, we're talking gibberish. <coughs> now finally, let's turn to natural teleology. Let's try this claim. Living things have an internal purpose that they realize in space and time. Well, you, you can see how this is going to fare. It's not going to be verifiable a priori. It's not going to be verifiable a posteriori. And so for the logical positivist, any talk about teleology is going to be absolute rank gibberish. But there are some standard criticisms that can be raised uh, against the positivist. Uh, the first one it can be raised against the principle of verification itself. Now notice on page 8 in the 1946 introduction, Ayer says, a statement is held to be literally meaningful if and only if it is either analytic or empirically verifiable. Now, that's a proposition, or that's a statement about statements, a proposition about propositions. It's the classic formulation of the logical positivist dogma, and it is itself not verifiable on its own terms. It is neither a tautology nor something that's verifiable on the lab bench or in the anatomy room. And so that's gibberish. Bad. Now, practically there's something worse, and that is that the positive account of meaning is too narrow. Uh, for example, uh, by making the 
proposition not only preeminent, but the exclusive bearer of meaning. Uh, the logical positivist excludes the possibility that imperative statements can be meaningful or that certain kinds of performative utterances can be meaningful. So let, let's talk about imperatives. Uh, that would be a statement like, beware of the dog. Okay, I mean, it seems to be meaningful. And in fact, if we meet Karma the Rottweiler, it becomes very meaningful indeed. And secondly, when we think about speech act theory, and this comes from the work of an Oxford philosopher named John Austin, who wrote a book called How to Do Things with Words in 1962. Uh, if we find a judge saying something like, I sentence you to 13 years of hard labor at the state penitentiary, notice that it's certainly meaningful for the poor guy being sentenced, and also that the utterance itself is a kind of event and not merely a statement that's verifiably true or false. Or you know, another one that's similar, you know, I had a, a friend who used to be the master of one of the colleges at Oxford. And when you get expelled from Oxford, what they call it is you get rusticated. You know, so, uh, rustic, the country. And so, uh, you know, when you're, when you're expelled, you're sent back down to the country. And so my friend said uh, that I had this wonderful event when I ex expelled a student. I got to say, I rusticated you. And I asked him, well, did he stay rusticated? And he, my friend says, damn right. Uh, so I rusticate you is a performative utterance as well. It's how to do something with words, not just say something. And logical positivism was never able to pick up on that sort of performative meaning. And finally, verificationism more generally becomes pro problematic because it makes the proposition or linguistic acts more generally the sole vehicle of meaning. And so, for example, the verificationist has a hard time explaining what goes on with diagrammatic reasoning. So if I showed you a diagram illustrating the Pythagorean theorem, you might look at it for a few moments and say, ah, I get it, and no words would be necessary. You would just see it and get what was going on. Similarly, uh, we have the example of pictures that show us how to do things. Uh, Think of the instructions you get with a do-it-yourself kit from IKEA. And, and so they'll show you in great detail how to build your table or whatever, including which direction to turn the screws. And if that was a series of propositions, it would be highly confusing and, uh, and bulky. But if you see the picture, it's all there in one look. And... Uh, and so the verificationist uh, has trouble explaining that old saw, a picture's worth a thousand words.